A new person for us to be jealous of, that guy, <laughs> David Karp. He's 26 years old. New Yorker. A New Yorker, Upper West Side, technically yes. a high school dropout. Anyway, he sold his company, Tumblr, to the good people at Yahoo for over a billion dollars. He personally nets something like nearly $300 million. Once again, he's 26, and uh, he just started this, what, 10 years ago or so. And Yahoo's cool, Tumblr's cool, and they're all here in New York City, and this is making Bloomberg so happy. All right, now, to chew this over, stand by, we've got two experts with us. We've got Chris Desi, social media expert. He's got his own company he's always happy to talk about. And Laura Casisto, <laughs> she covers economic development for the Wall Street Journal. Welcome to you both. Thanks. Can we talk about this young man, Carp? What is he, 26 years old? I was reading today that he was in a very prestigious, uh, with the Bronx High School of Science. His mom took him out, decided to homeschool him because she said all he was doing was hanging out on his computer anyway. He's a young guy. He's an entrepreneur. He dropped out of high school. I mean, back in the day when there were, you know, internet millionaires, they were college dropouts. Now they're high school dropouts. That's fantastic. I mean, listen, if you have it. Is it fantastic? And it's in, it, listen, you really have to know that your kid is special, boy. Th there have been interviews with him where he talked about when he was first trying to be an entrepreneur and he went to Asia and he was trying to start a business. He would try to make his voice deeper when he was on the phone. And then he just threw it to the wind. He said, the heck with it. I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to do what I love and I'm going to create something. I think it was called Davidville before it was called Tumblr. But, mm -hmm. you know, listen, now he's a multimillionaire. <laughs> Laura, tell us how significant is this uh, and was this a smart move? The industry, does it think that Yahoo made the right call here? Well, it's definitely a big deal for the city. As you said, it's a big deal for Bloomberg. They've invested a lot of money. We've got hundreds of new startups, but they're all kind of babies. And so this, for New York, it really puts it on the national stage. And that's really valuable. Whether or not it will be good news for Yahoo, whether or not that will actually translate to other big deals like this in New York, that, that remains to be seen. We've certainly been here before. Yahoo has. Uh, now, meanwhile, this young kid, just a few months ago in February, wasn't so sure that he was going to be a billionaire. He was worried about day to day. Let's listen. I got to tell you, like, my, my biggest dream right now, my biggest aspiration is that this thing is still employing me in 30 years and I get to build products that hundreds of millions of people use. I mean, that is, I think, you know, even though he got the big payoff, that's still a concern. Is he going to be working at his own company, right? Because Yahoo can say, uh, you know what, you're not the boss anymore. But apparently he is still going to be the boss. They're going to get the headquarters in New York. But in a way for New York, that's not the biggest concern. Because if he goes out, as has happened in the past, and starts investing money and starting new companies and stays in the city, that's great for us. Chris, will Tumblr change now that Yahoo owns it? Listen, famously now, Marissa Meyer has been... Uh, forthright in saying, I will not mess this up, which I think is a really compelling story, right? She's young, she's beautiful, she's smart, she's making changes with Yahoo. And she's You're saying, talking about the Yahoo CEO. The Yahoo CEO is saying, The woman who I built the nursery not, in her, she, in her uh, <laughs> waiting room. Absolutely. But she's saying, I won't mess it up, right? Because she's seen it happen before. And she understands that there's a track record there. She's saying, we're going to allow for the 300 million people on Tumblr to continue to do what they're doing. What the heck does Tumblr what do? The heck does Tumblr what do? is it? It's a, it? It's a blogging platform slash social network. So it's really easy for people people to blog. It's a one-click form of blogging. But can't you blog anyway curating. without you could, Tumblr? Yeah, absolutely. But so why do you need Tumblr? Here's the exciting thing. Here's why Yahoo needs Tumblr is because of the demographic, right? 61% of the users are under 34 years old. This is important for Yahoo. They need to get in front of those eyeballs. It's about advertising. Yahoo is testing in-stream advertising. The format of Tumblr plays to that. It's a great ecosystem for them to play in, to test yeah. out their advertising dollars and to see how it goes. Laura, anything else? <laughs> Uh, well, I think what we're looking, what I'm waiting for is to see what happens with companies here like Foursquare and Gilt and Etsy that are all on this sort of brink where they need to make some kind of a big exit and everyone's sort of anxiously waiting for that, as, as will I be. Are they looking for a Yahoo too, or you think? They might be looking for a Yahoo, they might decide to do an IPO, but I think they definitely want to make a big splash. And some of them, much like Tumblr, need to also figure out how to generate some revenue. Can we put up uh, Mr. Carp's picture one more time? Uh, today, the Times has a pretty big profile on him. And apparently, you know, in tech circles, he's somewhat controversial. I mean, Gawker labeled him a fame ball, you know, more interested in the, the prestige than in the work or something along those lines, you know, getting his name in the paper. What, what, talk, talk about his reputation a little bit in, in tech circles. I don't believe it because, listen, Gary Vaynerchuk, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago, he and I are friends. We were out at, I was out in New Jersey at the Wine Library talking to him about five years ago, talking about Tumblr. And Gary is a tech guy. He's in those inner circles. And he said, listen, I saw a twinkle in 
David's eye. He realized that he could change the format of blogging forever, and it was just a one-click blogging format. I don't get that sense, and I think he, he's coming from a real place. He's doing great things within New York. We as New Yorkers should be thrilled about that, that this tech stuff is happening right here. And he's a Brooklynite. He's, he's a living Brooklyn in Brooklyn kid. now. Oh, yeah, he's, he's living in Williamsburg. In he's a, bit, a hipster. <laughs> well, does he that. ride a bicycle too, Laura? <laughs> Do you know? I don't know, but I definitely, when I talked to a lot of tech startups in New York yesterday, I didn't get a sense that there was too much jealousy. Most people feel like this is what's good for, for New York is good for them too, so it's pretty collegial. All right, well, nice job, Al. <laughs> All right, Laura Cassisto from the Wall Street Journal. Chris Desi, thank you so much. What's the name of your company again? Silverback Social. And thank what do you guys do? We're a social media marketing firm. <laughs> and you do good stuff. Thanks, no, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Check it out. Thank you.